So today we're going to be checking out the classic Nikon F2 and I'm going to be doing a studio shoot with it. The F2 was the successor to the highly regarded Nikon F, jokingly referred to as a blunt weapon that took photographs, but its rugged design was built to last. And the F series of cameras has become as important to the history of photography as the Leica M or Olympus OM series of cameras. So since we're back in the studio, I thought I'd try a fun little experiment with the F2. I'm going to compare it to my everyday camera, which is the 5D Mark III, and I'm going to do a bit of a look with this one, and I'm going to do a bit of a look with this one, and we can compare the pictures. I don't think it's as an unfair a comparison as it might seem, because I can reckon I can get just as good an image out of this as I can out of this. So this is the Nikon F2, which is a classic camera made from 1971 to 1980. It was aimed at the pro market and it's got a number of really interesting features which really benefit professional photographers. It was really popular with sports photographers, for example, because with a motor drive added, you could shoot up to five frames a second with it, which doesn't seem much now, but was loads back then. One of the really unique things about this camera is that it has these prisms that can be removed. You would press this button on the back and this lever down here and you can take the prism off which is great for cleaning it you can change the ground glass and you could also upgrade your prism this is the dp1 prism which is the early one which has center weighted metering and a little screen on the top and a little screen that shows you the plus and minus in the actual viewfinder to help you get really quick exposures the F2 was a professional workhorse that you can buy today with lens for less than £200. So I wanted to see how it would hold up against my workhorse today, which is the Canon 5D Mark III. A couple of other really neat things about this camera are your depth of field preview button, which you have here, which just opens and closes your iris so that you can see what depth of field you're going to get. There's also a mirror lockup lever on the side here because some of the Nikkor lenses had rear elements that protruded into the cameras and would foul your mirrors. There's a self timer that you can do different times on, two, four, six, eight, and 10 seconds, which is pretty handy. This is a very heavy, very solid piece of kit. It strikes me as something that is pretty robust. Some people have told me that they're fantastic in a fight. No one's going to mug you if you've got one of these. You've also got this slightly different way of opening the back. On a lot of SLRs, you would simply open up the windback knob and you would just spring the back open. On this camera, you have a lock at the bottom here, which you have to spin around anti-clockwise until it just pops the spring and your uh, back is open. Loading the camera is really straightforward and really solid. You just put the film in on the left, run it out, put it in the tab and wind it on a few times. So on the Nikon, I shot two rolls of film, Portra 160 and T-Max 400. I then shot exactly the same scene with the Canon using an EF 28 to 135 lens. The lighting consisted of two three-quarter back soft boxes with one spot on the background and no fill. This gives me a really hard rim light around my subject. I tend to find that the smaller the studio, the harder you have to light. Mm -hmm. They remind me a bit of like um, old old film. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, like like you know, like like old like a Hollywood, silent movie. like silent films. Yeah, exactly. So I've shot a grand total of two rolls on this camera. And the first thing I found out is that you will never beat a Nikon F2 user at Thumb Wars. Um, it really is quite brutal on your hands. You're, gonna, you're actually going to build up muscle to use this camera. So it's a real man's camera. I like that. So this is hardly a scientific test. But in fact, it's really interesting because the Nikon F2 represents the genesis of a rivalry between Nikon and Canon that carries on to this day. I'm not really going to compare the results. You can see the differences for yourself. I am going to compare the two cameras ergonomically. The Nikon F2 is a camera for war photographers and sports photographers. It's incredibly robust, but using it is a very physical process. And I actually got cramp after just two rolls of film. So personally, I would stick to the Nikon FE or FM2, 
But at the end of the day, the camera is really just a vehicle for a lens. And the Nikkor lenses are really interesting because they're not super punchy like the Super Takumas and they're not super sharp and smooth like the Simicrons. But they are in themselves iconic. And if you take a picture with these lenses, your picture's gonna feel like it came straight out of the 70s. In the end, my opinion is just that. The F-Series cameras are iconic and they were used from everywhere, from the war zones of the East to the Space Shuttle. And for less than 200 pounds, they're still great cameras today. If you like this video, check out my other videos and join me next week when we will try underwater photography on large formats. Until then, happy shooting.